everybody, and thanks for joining me today. So, got a lot done on the uh, peacock's neck and chest, just sort of finishing up what's left in this uh, pass. So, yeah, carrying on here. I'll point out that I did not start at zero today. I did some stitching earlier, so, although not a lot. 79 stitches, so. Yeah, had an eye exam today, but thankfully he said we didn't have to put the drops in to dilate them, so I can still see. <laughs> yeah, the last year when I had that done, couldn't stitch for like a couple of days while they recovered, and that sucked. <laughs> yeah, apparently they say People with uh, darker eyes tend to, uh, it tends to uh, remain that way for longer, so. But uh, yeah, last year he had to because he said my eyes were so dry they were having a hard time seeing if they were healthy. And, uh, but this time he said they were okay and I've been taking the uh, Omega-3 since then because a friend recommended it for for dry eyes and yeah it's made a difference so definitely worth it <laughs> yeah because it was really bad last year I was putting drops in like every hour sometimes even more it was awful yeah so he said if I have to replace my glasses I'm at the age where I probably should get progressive lenses so yeah rats <laughs> I kind of suspected that would be the case because uh, I have been noticing that my close-up vision is still fine, but my distance vision is not as good. So, and yeah, like they say, 40 is around that age when people start needing it. So, but I don't know if I'm going to replace them just yet. They're not cheap, and I just got new glasses last year. So, I don't know. We'll see. Luckily, my son's prescription stayed the same so I'm happy about that because yeah I said at his age my eyes were still getting worse every year so his have been stable for the last few years so that's good so normally I stitch slanted that way but this color is going this way and I'm just going to follow it a bit even though it is going to go out of my guidelines a bit but as I say these aren't rules just guidelines so I can changing things up when I feel like it because it's my project, so. <laughs> yeah, I've often said if I had three wishes, I think one of them would be to uh, have perfect vision without glasses. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, if I lose them, I'm really... I'm really hooped. I had one time, this was when I was uh, living by myself, and uh, I uh, knocked my I, them off the nightstand in the middle of the night. I heard them hit the floor, and I was like, oh, right? And so I knew I had to find them because I didn't want to accidentally step on them or something. So on my, you know, very carefully get down onto my hands and knees and patting around on the floor for like 20 minutes, could not find them. And finally found them, they had gone like under my bed, but oh. <clears throat> yeah, I didn't have anybody I could ask to help me look for them and I didn't have any spare glasses, I only had the one pair, so. Oh. I remember after searching for a while thinking, yeah, if I just get up and stomp around, I'm sure I'll find them right away. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, I try to now always put them in the exact same place on my, uh, on my bedside table. Because I had a couple times that, yeah, I had to bug my husband in the morning, please help me find my glasses. Ugh. Yeah. People were saying, like, without modern medicine, you know, what would have taken you out? And a lot of people were saying, oh, you know, ear infection when they were a kid or something. I'm like, well, my vision is so bad, I probably would have fallen into a hole somewhere, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. 
So yeah, part of our back to school routine is getting an eye exam, making sure he can see properly before the school year starts. Yeah, we did that before kindergarten and he needed them already. So, well, both me and his father have needed glasses since we were kids. So we figured, yeah, any children we had would, would need them too. Yeah, I should have probably got mine in second grade, but uh, nobody knew I needed them. It wasn't until the kid who sat next to me complained to the teacher that I was always asking him what was written on the board because I couldn't see it clearly. And then, yeah, teacher's like, I think you need to go, yeah, get her eyes checked. And uh, yeah, my first pair of glasses was like minus four. So yeah, I, should, I definitely should have had them before that. But when you're a kid, you don't know that that's not normal, right? You think it's fuzzy for everybody. You don't know that's not what the world looks like. <laughs> yeah, I remember when I got my first pair, looked around and it was like, everything looked so much smaller because it wasn't fuzzy and blurry. It was actually in focus. Ooh. some bigger blocks in color here again. So yeah, this bright color here can kind of see it's gonna go down this way and sort of curve out a bit. And I'm probably just gonna follow it all the way down to that line 140, which is where I'm ending this horizontal pass. So. Yeah, I could fill in all this stuff sort of above it first, but it's very pale and I'm not sure how well you all would be able to see it on camera. It's all white and ecru and very, very pale blue. So uh, at some point I may have to stitch some of it on camera, but for now I've got a nice right section I can work on where I know you'll see it. So I figured we'll work on that today. I'll work on the paler stuff off camera. So I passed 50,000 stitches now, so woohoo! That's always an exciting milestone. Actually, right. Always, always park. Right. Oh, actually, it didn't matter because it's one stitch off below that, but oh well. So I'm branching this off here. So we'll start a new strand for this side here, and then have the other strand on the other side around this. Those uh, square filled in stitches. Oh, very happy for Pattern Keeper because, yeah, if I unhighlight, it's kind of hard to, to see the difference between the uh, filled in circle or filled in square there. So yeah, I absolutely love the app for that. Highlights it for you and so you can see exactly where each one is. 
or on my last piece I had, one that had capital zero and then, or capital O and then the zero right next to each other. And so, yeah, one was just like slightly more oval than the other and it was, it was hard to tell. So yeah, I was very happy for Pattern Keeper to help me keep those straight. So my husband came back home from up north at just the right time. The uh, One of the fires there said it went, it traveled 50 kilometers in just a couple of days. And uh, they had to evacuate everyone and they had to do it by air because all the roads were blocked by fire. So yeah, he left just in time, thankfully. And then he doesn't have to travel far out of town until September. So hopefully by then things will be more under control. Yeah, I usually don't pray for early snow, but uh, this year that'll be just fine because that'll help keep things, uh, get things back under control, put some of those fires out. feeling bad for all the people who had to evacuate. Hopefully they'll be able to get that fire under control and it won't damage the, uh, the town there. So his next trip out, he's gonna, to a different area, he's gonna fly and then a co-worker who works in that area is gonna pick him up and take him there, so. Yeah, cause like I said, that would have really sucked if he'd had to leave his uh, company truck behind in an evacuation. keep stitching with that color but I'm gonna switch colors for now give my arms a little bit of a break yeah the last few days I've been having to watch it because uh, with such big blocks of color it's easy for me to get a repetitive stress injury so Yeah, and then after this we'll have some more sky to do before we get to the garden wall again. Not sure if we'll get to that by the end of August or not, we will see. Oh my goodness. There. Not having good luck threading a needle there. Yeah, it's funny, I didn't realize how much I rely on being able to move both the needle and the thread when I'm threading a needle. But the other day I had to use my sewing machine and getting it threaded was so frustrating because of course the needle doesn't move. You have to only move the thread and yeah. That's when I discovered that when I thread, I'm sort of moving the two towards each other and that's why I can thread a hand needle much faster. was uh, finishing my Majora's Mask after I attached the hanging loop. I always just run a, one line of stitches right where it attaches just to make sure that it won't come unglued and separate because, yeah, you don't want that falling down, so. Rats! Feeling I'd unthreaded that. There. Yeah, one 
hazard of working with the shorter pieces here is that it happens more easily. Okay. Do that. Leave that unthreaded as well because it's going to be a bit till I get back to it. Okay, so back to this color. So I just moved my frame again yesterday. working across sort of like one and a half diagonals here. Like I say, I always I follow the colors and not the diagonal lines. They're just a rough guide. So I'm probably going to go down here a bit and then just sort of slant it from there. So I won't do all of the this color. I'll fill in some of the stuff up top first. I'll decide when I get there. I plan ahead a bit, but not that far ahead. <laughs> I'm trying to force the whole thing to stay slanting the same way when it's the motif is curving like this is kind of more trouble than it's worth so I just follow it then yeah I've seen some people they never deviate from their diagonal they're way more disciplined than I am
not in quite the right place. make sure where I pin stitch because right next to the edge of the peacock there's the sky and it's a much lighter color so do not want them showing through back to the left here again. Start working my way out. This piece is long enough. I think so. It's not very long, but it should be enough for these three here. Maybe a little bit more. wherever the the mood takes me <laughs> yes yeah, so my estimate was 18% completed by the end of this month and that's looking doable we'll see
think it'll take me a couple more months to reach 25% done. So uh, my husband and I have been watching um, Burn Notice on Prime, which is uh, a series about a guy who used to be a spy till he got burned and uh, so basically dropped by the government and he's no longer working for them. And uh, yeah, the only thing is that a lot of times the stuff he invents wouldn't work and my husband being an engineer knows so he's always oh come on that wouldn't work that wouldn't work this guy who wrote this doesn't know what he's talking about <laughs> uh. yeah we had similar um they did a reboot of macgyver a few years ago and yeah i think maybe like one of the inventions he he came up with would actually work the rest were all nonsense yeah it was one of those, it was so bad that it was entertaining. <laughs> yeah. I don't know whether they were trying to make it like a spoof of itself or not, but that's how it felt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised they didn't have this, you know, don't try this at home folks warnings, but I guess they don't really do that anymore. I don't know, maybe it's implied or something. But yeah, it's fun because it's action and all that, but there's also a comedy element to it as well. So yeah, we've been quite enjoying it. I never heard of it while it was on. It was one of those, the algorithm found it for me. Yeah, I have to say, Amazon's algorithm has been pretty good. That's how I found Hell on Wheels. Recommended it to me, and... Yeah, I find a lot of times, too, it will actually recommend stuff to me that I've already watched, so... It's elsewhere, so it's learned my tastes pretty well. Yeah, I'm just sad now. Strange New Worlds is over for another season. Uh, feels like it just started and now it's over already. So, yeah, I'd really want to, I would really like to see them bring back the over 20 episode seasons. 10 is just not enough. I mean, they were 10 good episodes, but yeah. It definitely left me wanting more.
Yeah, I also watched the first season of um, the adaptation of Marie Antoinette. Uh, BBC did it. I enjoyed it. The costumes were good and everything, but uh, I don't know whether they just didn't care about making historical anachronisms or what, but yeah, there was quite a few that just, ugh, they were like a finger in the eye. Like there's one point where somebody says, if I'm old, then you're a dinosaur. And I'm going, okay, but they didn't discover the existence of dinosaurs for like another hundred years. <laughs> so, or somebody says, you know, am I close? And they said, well, you're in the ballpark. And I'm like, I don't think baseball was around yet, so I don't think that was correct. Or people are always yelling shut up, and that's actually quite a modern term. So, the other one is okay. People use that a lot, but okay didn't come around until about, I think I read it was like the 1920s or something. So, I mean, I understand if people haven't studied it, they wouldn't know that. It's a word we use so much without even thinking about it. But yeah, they would have said, you know, all right or very well or something. Okay wouldn't have meant anything. <laughs> I said, sometimes I kind of wish I didn't know that because yeah, it draws me right out of the story because I know it's incorrect. So yeah, I mean, I'm watching it because it's a drama. So it's not like I'm expecting a history lesson for it to be perfect or anything, but yeah, that kind of stuff does annoy me a bit. put up some big numbers again today for stitch counts. Also did those two because they were kind of connected, so worked out.
Okay, so back over to the left again. Looking right in the corner here. trimming it, it still doesn't want to. There we go. It didn't want to go through the eye there. I could pin stitch that one, but I've discovered with this bright color, the ends keep getting pulled through to the front and it's a big pain. So yeah, I kind of stopped doing that with that color. So I had sort of fuzzies coming through in the navy areas with the bright blue and they were quite noticeable. So I had to use my snag tool quite a lot to get them to go back to the wrong side and it was very annoying. Now just trying to prevent that by putting the ends up through parts that have been already stitched and then I don't have to worry about pulling it through to the front by accident like that. with the dark navy it's not as bad since it's not as bright I think it's it's less noticeable at least that's been my experience so about a medium length strand so I'm gonna I think carry this one off to the side to do the sort of scattered stitches here Mm-hmm. 
may have to do somewhat of order here or add another thread I'll decide as I get there tons of this color anyway so be using up several threads anyway no matter how I stitch it do this by feel sometimes it doesn't want to cooperate yeah if you push too hard the needle comes up through to the front and you don't want that obviously I want it to stay on the back side so it won't show What's left of this thread will probably be enough to do these few stitches here. Oops. There we go. So what I'm going to do is switch colors. Oh, there we go. Okay. And then I'll start a new navy blue strand on this side probably. Goodness, pardon me. <clears throat> yeah, only two colors here, but the way they interlock with each other means I'm going to be 
switching back and forth a bit here. Like I said, I like having those built-in breaks for my arms. So it keeps things interesting too. thousand of this color left so blasting right through it I'm going to do that one up here in this corner first before I do that row below it. So I'll see if I have to do anything out of order or not. I'm planning a little bit, but not that far ahead. I'd rather be stitching than staring at my pad and figuring out what path I want to take <laughs> with my uh, thread. So I adjust on the fly sometimes. needle come up on the other side of the grid line so I don't sew over it. Not that it really matters, but it does make it a little easier to remove later. I think maybe I can avoid closing anything in here. I'll 
we'll see how successful I am in that. I think I will manage. I'm pretty good at doing that. It's practice.
have to close anything in. Managed to maneuver my way around it. Just gonna stagger this a bit so I'm gonna go two stitches less. With this row, I did one stitch less for the last row, then I might work even. Yeah, I just kind of randomize it so there's not a sharp straight line. At least until I run out of thread, and then I'm just gonna head back up here and go across. Mm-hmm. 
one less for this row. I'll probably run out of thread after completing it, which is fine. And then, yeah, rather than continuing downwards, I'm just gonna go back up to the top of this section here and work my way down towards here again. This blue here kind of has a natural break point here where another color is coming in. So that's probably where I'm going to stop going over to the right and just sort of slant it back down left. Fill it in later. I mean, it'll all get filled in at some point, so. Okay, I think I'll stitch until this is out, which is probably just the stitches I've highlighted, and then I think that will be a good place to take a break. Yeah, over 400 completed today, but like I said, I didn't start at zero. I had about the first 80 or so done before I began filming, so. But, hey, that's still a pretty good number, I would say. stitch out. 
this thread, so might as well. Okay, so 412, although like I said, I'd done the first 80 or so, but still that's a pretty good number. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, uh, so as usual, thank you so much for joining me today and hope to see you here again another time. All right, thanks everyone.